on our very first ever Farm for Fun show from the Farm Progress show, we bust out the big guns to kick it right off. These men are some of the largest and top tier content creators in the ag space. Their fun, energetic, and educational videos bring over 336,000 subscribers on YouTube, 142,000 on Instagram, and 104,000 on Facebook together from West Central Minnesota. We have Chet, the Big Sweet, and Duggo from Larson Farm. Woo! What is up, guys? How you guys doing? Doing good, doing good. It's going to be hard to... Uh Keep that energy. Keep, keep that energy. Yeah, take up, that yeah. energy and then keep it. Let's go. So you guys are nervous to be up here, and you guys are some of the best content creators we have. What's going on? Well, we're normally by ourselves filming uh, on our own farm and not yep. in front of an audience, so yeah, a little yep. different. How many autographs have you guys signed today? Well, a few. A, a few. few. <laughs> a few. It'll be more. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. Cool. Well, I gave a little introduction. Uh, one of you guys want to give a little bit of background about the farm and then how you got into uh, what you do today? Yeah, I can definitely. So I'm fifth generation. I'm Doug's son. This is Chet. And uh, basically, we farm, used to have hogs. We've kind of transitioned into grain farming just Smart. due to uh, <laughs> lack of time. Barns were we're out grandparents kind of phased out of farming hogs and moved into um, grain farming full yep. time. Yep. So Doug, when did you when did you start to farm or uh, was it grandparents fifth generation I heard. So grandparents when was it established? Oh, I think uh, 1918 is 1918. When, yeah. Gotcha. And from there it uh, survived. It's been a family family state. tie your whole time. Yep. Gotcha. Now that now now we're to the kids. Yes, yes, and we've taken it to a uh, more public farm. <laughs> so now we're YouTube farming, right? Yeah. Everyone right, knows your dirty laundry now. We're still farming, but uh, it's a little different now that we carry cameras. That was a little hard to uh, get the older generation to be okay with, it, but... Uh, you know, and they needed a pretty face for the camera, too, so that's kind of why I'm here. That's why. <laughs> so that's Eric, the the big Swede. If I read right, you're not a, you're not a family member, right? No, we are related, but it's like third cousins. I okay. Mean, you know, quite a ways back. But yeah, not related. Met uh, Chet at a Bible study. What four years ago? Four and a half, maybe. That's pretty young maybe friendship there. Yes. Yep. Did not know him before that, and uh, him and I were well. We kind of just started hanging out away from the farm. And uh, at the time, I was working with a, an uncle of mine, and that wasn't going anywhere. So I asked Larson's here for some employment. Uh, in return, I would farm my own acres and hire them to uh, custom farm that. Oh, nice. Because I didn't have the equipment. Well, that's and a good deal. that started two and a half years ago is when I started working for Larson's. So. And Chet, how long have you been farming? Oh, 10 years. I, start, I rented my first farm when I was uh, 17. 17? So. Yeah. So still in high school, decided yeah. agriculture is the business, that's, I'm in. I pretty much knew the minute I could walk what Good. I was going to do. So it uh, was always a passion, continues to be. So, so and you said, fun said before you were more livestock, and, the, and then now you're turning more row crop. What do you like better? Well, cleaning crap was still fun when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, I wasn't very old when we kind of phased out of the hogs so it was still fun to me uh to raise hogs and chase pigs but uh yeah. dad, dad's shaking his head no to way be young again <laughs> <laughs> we still have hogs on our farm and i like i said i said smart when you said you got out of hogs because that man it makes a makes you old real quick yes <laughs> yeah there's a few body parts of mine that no longer function properly <laughs> yeah and bad knees and so whose <laughs> idea was it to go on youtube uh, it, basically, I started on Instagram, and uh, Cole the Corn Star actually is the one that encouraged me to get going on uh, YouTube, so I kind of owe my career to him. <laughs> and he's just down the road from us in Marshalltown, about an hour yep. away. Yeah, so he kind of encouraged me to do it. I was entertaining on other platforms, so... Um, started a YouTube channel and it pretty much exploded right away. I'm surprised that it wasn't Zach because you're not too far from Millennial Farmer. I didn't know that farming YouTubers were a thing. Really? Until Cole's like, you need to start doing this. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so 
If I remember from one of the videos, the reason you got off of Instagram is because Instagram's for girls? Uh, that's why I didn't get on it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that was uh, kind of one of my friends. I mess around on Snapchat just I for got friends you. and yeah. family. And uh, he's like, you need to get on Instagram. You, you do it on Instagram, it'd be really cool. Yeah. You'd be famous. I'm like, I don't want to be famous. I just want to <laughs> create content and make people laugh. And so um, I got on Instagram. And it, 25,000 followers in one year. Wow. It's 2019. It was muddy. It was anything that could bro break on the farm did break. Anything that could be stuck was stuck multiple times. I think I and remember it, watching. It was, it was it just, it blew up. It was an interesting year. And did you have some 2,000 bushel carts or something that all uh, getting stuck? Or? The 1,500 or maybe that's the 13 what it was. Yeah. The wheeled carts. That was <laughs> definitely why we phased and did more tracks after that year. I think that was the first year I ever watched. So mm -hmm. you got carts and tractors stuck, and Dad's probably looking at you, and then you pull a camera out and start videoing it? What, what's uh, what's Dad's thought? <laughs> well, let's say uh, it went a lot better when the camera's out because everybody is a little bit more calm. Uh, <laughs> very it good. It used to be a half a day project. This might go somewhere. Stuck. What's not? There you go. Yeah, the, that was. Uh, the, we blew the hydro on the combine in the mud, oh, oh. and that was, I would say, the first hiccup with filming because and no one was too happy knowing there's a sixty thousand dollar repair bill coming down the road and the combine's dead on the road and yep. now i'm putting cameras in people's face that no one's comfortable being on camera it was there was a lot of editing yeah. needed. I, I believe that's when doug isn't that when you broke the steering column yeah that that was one of the inside the combine that led up to that yeah <laughs> oh man the situation so developed back yes. years ago you know you can steer a combine or a tractor without the engine running well not on the new ones no no that no. didn't work so well. well we were advised in our defense by our deer technician that you could do it well you can but just don't jerk on the steering column <laughs> it's a very slow process but it does work man i can't imagine but i guess people like seeing adversity like that so take a bad bad event, put cameras in people's faces, and I bet it got you a lot of views and followers. Yeah, there was a lot of learning events. Um, obviously, when you start anything new, it's creating a story. Every video, you're starting out basically with a story, and I have to do it in one day. And at the beginning, we got a lot of, a lot of hate on some of them first videos, just not knowing how to put it all together, explain properly why this developed, <laughs> this situation developed. So um, a lot of teaching or learning and Te teaching each other. So let me cut in here for a second. We got a whole different crowd live here in the Sukup building uh, for, for what is listening uh, online when this goes live on the podcast. But uh, for, for some of you in the crowd that might not know, of course, YouTube, uh, social media platform, 190 million hours are, are watched every day uh, on YouTube. And these guys are sharing their farm story on YouTube. And when it comes to social media, they call it an influencer. So they're, they're uh, teaching uh, other young folks about farming. With that being said, there's a thing called subs. And I was like, what is subs, subs? So you guys have subscribers on your YouTube channel. Do you have any idea how many subs you might have? Oh, I believe 335,000. I said in my intro, Dave. Yeah. I know, I missed it. Weren't it was listening? so loud, I just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so 335,000 people across the world are watching you. Uh, uh, what, what, where do you get ideas for content? Like, what do you, is it just like you said, telling a story? Just wait until dad breaks another tractor and then you just record it? Is that? Uh, we try to do three videos a week. Three videos a so, week. So, um, I mean, it's generally filming at least once a day at, at some point. I mean, you got to film three days. Uh, sometimes you got to film every day to get three out in a week. Just because so it's a it's a full time job aside from farming then. Yeah. How long does it take yeah. you to edit each video? Uh, I've since started hiring out. Editing. It's a full-time so, job, so we have somebody six else hours to per wow. video of editing for a 20-minute video. So four to six hours of editing. It, it just is not feasible for uh, myself well, to Dave, edit anymore. I mean, we're much, much smaller on scale, and we hire our editing out. It has to be done if you want to put put out good content constantly, yeah. right? And have a life. Yeah. I mean, I like to go home after. So, is there somebody day. you're targeting online? Are you targeting uh, uh, older farmers? Are you targeting younger farmers? Uh, what, what, what's your target audience? Men, women, kids? Uh, just looking at the analytics, it's 
25 to 35 is kind of our broadest range or our, our main age group, uh, but it's all over the board. Uh, we have a wonderful 7% woman following that I'm pretty sure are moms of the kids that watch. 7%? Yeah. That seems pretty so low. It, it's mostly male audience. And Come on, ladies. <laughs> I don't see too many. <laughs> You know, but it's also, too, you try to reach uh, maybe the people that are less involved or less knowledgeable on farming or in the ag industry just to try to educate them along with entertain them uh, on our channel. So you're kind of an advocate in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a big word. Yeah. Does everyone carry cameras around then? Uh, it's generally me. Uh, Eric definitely... I have to put one in his hand every once in a while. Yeah. Say, film today, please. Yeah. Uh, Dad, he kind of bucks it, but he gets some good stuff sometimes. He always comes up to me and says, I'm behind. I need more footage. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> no, but uh, I would say out of the, the whole channel, I, I, I personally probably have the most screen time um, and probably am the least popular. So, like, the, <laughs> you hear at the farm shows, you know, everyone loves the big Swede. Like he's yeah, everyone the, loves the big Swede. Uh, I heard a, cra a kid over there say, oh, there's Duggo. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I think the, the older generation really like what Dad brings to the channel with the uh, stories of how it used to be. Um, you if know, you know, you know. If you yeah, know. if you know, you know. There's <laughs> truth to that. You don't even know what you don't know. <laughs> One thing our listeners might not know is if you want to text a question, for the Larson Farms, 515-207-9640. Just want to remind you, right now, live, if you want to text a question, we'll ask it. Go if ahead you and text have it. a magical cell service that can get a text through, that would be good. It's hard. It is. <laughs> it's hard to get one around A lot here. of people here. Doug, was it, was it hard when you guys, when Chet started putting a camera in your face to, to accept it? Oh, you'd have to watch the first couple of videos. It's pretty much... Uh, Self-explanatory. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wasn't the best, but I guess it's, uh, I went along with it more or less because I think the gap between us farm folks and the city people have gotten to be so vast that anything that we can do to show them that we're not doing the things that they maybe think we're doing out there to hurt the land and things, it's, uh, we're just doing what it takes to Survive and yeah, we're doing our best, working hard. Yeah, it's fun to show you know other farmers. We learn a lot from comments, emails, personal messages. Um, it's hard to respond to them all, but yeah, um, we do glance over them. And it, it's awesome the stories we hear of how we've helped other people and the messages we get suggesting other. Uh, ways of doing stuff and it's like hey how come we didn't think of that especially like wrenching and stuff in the shop and people give suggest suggestions and it's oh, okay we're gonna start doing it like that now yeah yeah it says here you've been working with farm rescue for a while yeah yeah so farm events where we go do meet and greets and sign autographs we um kind of use them as a um fundraiser. Gotcha. It's all about helping people, just like you said. So uh, current conditions uh, were sunny. Uh, they canceled some of the tillage stuff. I heard that because uh, we had some moisture here. What are your guys' conditions in Minnesota? How's your crops looking? Well, it managed to do what we feared. It quit raining. So what we had to do this spring to get the corn in is now definitely hurt us. The low spots have pretty much stopped growing and no tassel, no cob and but yeah. it's on smaller parts of the field that we plowed through the, what do you call it, Chet? That sloppy, wet gumbo <laughs> stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we went, we went from one spectrum to the other. It was, we started planting a week or two later than when we finished planting last spring. Uh, we were a month behind when the wheels hit the ground. And then it just went to the other side of the spectrum dried up, didn't rain for a month or two, uh, and you smeared that sidewall, the roots couldn't go anywhere, and then there was no moisture uh, fed to them, and it, it shows a little bit. Uh, it actually looks a lot better than it should, but yeah. there are some bad spots. Yeah, we're, we're surprised, because there wasn't a field that we were in that we should have been in. 
<laughs> like there was never a field that was fit. Um, so we, we pushed it, but the calendar's like, well, you're either gonna plant or yeah. you're not, so it's yeah. gonna be a salvage mission. That's, it is what it is with Settle yeah. Hot this spring. We were in that same position about 20 miles south of here. I wore the lettering on the sidewalls of the planter tires off because of the mud. <laughs> I'd never seen that before. <laughs> the heat you could build up with mud. Yeah, we were pretty sick of cleaning gauge wheels and the NT style planter with the, the wheels in between the rows where it's a very oh, yeah. bad, yep. bad thing this year. Yep. I will say the, the mud wheels, gauge wheels, had, were worth their weight in gold this spring. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, I think the one field we were in four times, just trying to get it finished planting, kept getting rained out or parts of the field weren't fit. And Doug, you kind of finally just went out there and drugged the plant around yeah, in the mud. I, I'd done things that <laughs> I, I'm not going to admit. Planting to. sins. <laughs> yep. That's what those are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's hard to get, a, uh, get excited about the growing season after you know what you did. Well, there's, I, was, I spent uh, about a week in our sulfur just drying out ahead of our field cultivators, just trying to get the, the fields prepped. I was so sick of going in circles, yep. just round <laughs> in a circle, do this low spot, that valley, and sometimes whole fields, and I'm just shaking my head. I'm like, this is what I've been told never to do yes. in past years, but it's like, just go do what you can. I should ask, is it all corn and soybeans, or do you get into the sugar beets up there at all? Or? There is a lot of sugar beets in our area, but uh, we are corn and soybeans. First year of trying to raise uh, black turtle beans, so more of like an edible, a food grade um, product. So don't know what we're doing with that. But yeah. we're, we're trying to get a, a more profitable crop into the farm. Is um, there a traded market for that, or is that more of like a contracted acre? Contracted, yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, there's two locations within half hour of our farm that you can bring those beans to, and you kind of buy the seed through them as well. What product do those become? Well, depends a little bit on what uh, quality you have when you harvest. Uh, I raised them with the previous farmer a little bit, and uh, if you brought in dirty beans, uh, if you got dust on the beans, they would can them, you know, because you got to hide that. <laughs> defect. Yep. Uh, if you can keep them clean, uh, like if it's not 20, uh, 2019, <laughs> then uh, they can bag them and they go on the shelf to be sold. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of the market is down in Mexico. Okay. Uh, they, the co-op that we worked with contracted a lot with Mexico. So Interesting. Yeah. So Doug, I got a question for you. Uh, one of the things, so uh, for everybody in the crowd, we're Farm for Profit podcast. Uh, Tanner, I, and Corey started this a long time ago. We wanted to help uh, anybody and everybody be more profitable, okay? Now, you're on our Farm for Fun show because you guys are way more fun than profit. But with that being said, what uh, uh, a lot of our listeners are younger, I'm going to say, and they struggle with the fact that uh, maybe they come home and dad won't uh, listen to the new advice they learned in college or something. We've been doing it this way forever. Now, Doug, you're, you're taking a whole new way of farming here where maybe the kids are coming in, uh, where Eric and Chet are coming in and giving you new ideas, and you take those new ideas. Uh, Eric, what, what new ideas have you guys brought to Doug, and uh, how'd you implement them? Well, I can think of, so I, I come from a mechanical engineering background. Yeah. I graduated college with that degree in 2017, and uh, math is maybe one of my skills. I think I was one credit away from having a math uh, degree. Wow. Are but, we bragging? Well, it's pointless now. But, <laughs> but with going to school, I used a lot of Excel and a lot of sheets like that, just trying to expedite formulas or expedite work. And I know I've brought that to the farm, uh, trying to move away from writing stuff down on paper every year, whether it's what you need to order chemical, you know, what your crop rotation is going to be, um, just getting everything onto the computer so it's rep, uh, replicable or repeatable the next year with a click of a button. And that's been accepted somewhat, but it also is tough to... Because <laughs> he uh, looks for approval. It's yep. tough to transition sometimes. It's tough, so. to, tough to teach the, the program. I right. mean, he makes all of them, and they're stellar. They're awesome. But to teach us all how to run it all... That's so sort of if he's thing. making the decision, are you guys ready to be the decision makers? Always. Always. Um, always. Yes. <laughs> That's always his answer. 
Uh, well, this is a fun show. I don't really want to bring a dark light to it, but you had some uh, trials and tribulations in 2020, and maybe you don't want to talk about it, but is, are you ready to talk about that at all? Yeah, I'm fine. So in, in 2020, you're, you lost your wife uh, to yep. cancer? Yep. Can you uh, go through that process at all? So life is going good. Everything is, you know, finally feeling like I know what I'm doing, where I'm going. You know, YouTube channel's blowing up. She was the editor, um, and she took the YouTube channel to the next step because I was editing at first on my phone and just no time, absolutely no time to do it. And so she started editing and really cut, cut a lot of the crap out. Yeah. And, you know, the person that shoots the footage, in my opinion, shouldn't be the guy editing it because you think it's great yeah. and funny or interesting. And I'd be like, where's that at? Yeah. She's like, that was dumb. That Don't do that again. <laughs> that was dumb. And so she simplified them, made them shorter, more interesting, faster paced. And so, I mean, everything was going great. And then uh, landed in the hospital and got diagnosed with basically leukemia, which hmm. uh, everyone kind of knows what that yeah. diagnos or diagnosis um. is. And it was uh, seven months from that to passing away. So it was very quick and all that basically leaves your life and like, uh, where, what now, what now? I yeah. mean, I've created something now that like, where do I go? And um, on top of, now I have to cook and do laundry and teach how, learn, <laughs> learn how to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it, it was life in, in shambles there. And yeah. I remember seeing that. I'm sorry for your loss, but for others that have gone through something like that, and we had uh, something recently with uh, Rob and Emily Sharkey's yep. boy um, that we're going to be doing a thing tomorrow night for. Mm -hmm. How does one get back on the horse after some, a loss like that? Oh, uh, the days keep coming. They ain't going to stop. So um, stay busy. I mean, that's have great friends. I mean, we we're, we did a lot together. Yep. Don't know how your girlfriend allowed it, but Don't we, we spent a lot of time together, a lot of nights hanging out and doing stuff we maybe shouldn't do, but yeah, uh, kept us busy there and kept us entertained. And uh, life is farming and busy in general, but don't sitting around the house will make anyone depressed and thinking about it too much. So mm -hmm. that's my advice: the, the days aren't going to come, life ain't going to stop. Yeah. It's, it's going to run you over if you don't keep going. So and she probably would have wanted you to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Corey, I got a question from the audience. They are curious, uh, what are you looking forward to this fall? I don't know if that means YouTube or just farming. What are you looking forward to this fall? I'm super excited to try this uh, new crop. I mean, we don't know what we're doing. I mean, for the most part, it's going to be... With the edible a, beans you're talking about? Yeah, the yeah. edible beans. It's going to be a, a, a new experience all around. Are you kind of, are you planning on doing more edible type stuff or... We're just kind of getting our feet wet with it, seeing how it goes. Um, can't really spray too harsh of chemicals on them, yeah. so weeds are an issue to fight. Can so. you harvest that, or is that a contractor that comes in? No, nope, we did some mods to our combine to allow them to slow them down, basically, feed accelerators, stuff like that, to allow more delicate harvest of them so we don't crack them. And gotcha. Well, I was told by one of the uh, Sukup employees to give you a little bit of hard time about uh, some of the grain bins in your videos. <laughs> So um, we need to see a change there on the next bin that goes up, maybe. But uh, <laughs> it's all in good fun, right? You're here, you're sitting here, so that's the gift back, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, so in, in your farm operation now, for uh, everybody that's listening here, is there anything you young guys want to change? Uh, bigger combine, bigger something or other? Is it uh, if money weren't an issue, what would you do? Buy more farmland? Well, that's always, I would say, any farmer's goal, you know, for retirement and more acres to farm. That's, I think, but that's easier said than done. Um, I should have bought our fertilizer three years ago for the next 10 years. There you go. That would have saved money. Yeah. I don't know. The, uh, we're sitting in a good spot. I feel very comfortable. The last few years, we've kind of gotten our machinery lineup in a 
position that I'm very happy now that everything's gone up a hundred grand. Um, just keep on rolling. Who's, uh, who's some of the best partners that you guys have worked with that have supported the YouTube and all that? Umber Firth, Salford, uh, my main channel sponsor. I mean, those, I mean, there's a ton of them. Yeah. I can't name them all off. I feel yeah. like a NASCAR driver right now. Yeah. Putting <laughs> Don't know what to do with your hands. Yeah, Fig, Fig Newtons. Yeah. I need a right jacket. across the <laughs> need a jacket. windshield of the combine. Yeah. <laughs> But that is, that is a part of the YouTube channel as it gets bigger, you know, it, it helps support it and costs and it's you, fun too. That brings a whole new like uh, element of content. We get mm -hmm. to demo a lot of cool stuff and show off what they make. I mean, not every farmer has no. uh, new stuff or the ability to run or the need to run big stuff, but it is awesome to... Uh, represent these companies and show these awesome products that they make and yeah and i think that's what a lot of farmers enjoy watching is the tillage stuff that yep that we different styles i mean we were we were ripping the corn stalks with big heavy rippy rippers and and now the vertical tillage stuff has really changed a lot of the stuff for us and i think other people are watching that and so I think everybody is happy. Yeah, get a vertical tillage tool if you don't like picking rocks. Yeah. It works a lot better. I don't like picking rocks. <laughs> I got a claw on the front of our 9520 that picks up rocks, the big ones. Anyway, oh boy. that's pretty I, cool. I think that I've seen that $6 corn problem, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that was, that's mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was $8, $8 corn. <laughs> <laughs> no, $7 corn. But oh. So what's uh, you guys just going to continue to do what you're doing now? Do you have any new... Uh, media type stuff that you're going to do? Any podcasts or video, uh, uh, TV shows? No, no, I haven't been approached by Discovery Channel yet, yeah. but you never know. <laughs> um, no, I, I, quite honestly, time is the issue for everything. I mean, we are full-time farmers that yep. um, are working every single day and working long hours, so... As far as adding more podcasts, they're fun. I'm sure we could put together something pretty sweet, but yeah. it comes down to time and editing and yeah. more emails, more phone calls, more of the not fun stuff. Yeah. The sitting and talking is the fun part. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I've got another question from the audience here. This one will be fun. So you guys are famous, as it is. Uh, I, you said you've been signing autographs, but who is the most famous person you've met so far along your YouTube journey? Oh, man. Other than the Farm for Profit guys, of course. I mean, <laughs> right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, I mean, we all are, as far as the, the YouTube, uh, farming YouTubers, we're all friends. and We all text each other and ask. So, I mean, we know all of the farming YouTubers. Um, as far as... You can't, met, you can't put anybody up above, above the anybody else there. That might cause trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we there did to talk crap about our friends. <laughs> Yeah, I can't think of anything besides, like you said, we're, you're more friends with them. It seems more personal than uh, talking with a celebrity uh, just because we can relate. Yeah, we're all normal people that uh, just carry cameras at work. Yeah, there you go. Film our misery to give you guys laughs. <laughs> well, where are you guys going the rest of the day so the posse can follow you around? Yeah, we will be at the Salford booth uh, from 2 to 4 today and tomorrow. Um, yeah, so come say hi. Swing by if you're yeah. interested, shaking hands. Coming down to the, the party tomorrow night, after party tomorrow night? Yeah, we're yep. going to try to. Yeah, we'll have some stuff there to sign for uh, the uh, Sharkies. So. Awesome. I got some That's more cool. fun questions for you. Yep. Are you guys on TikTok? Yes. What's your Dabble. TikTok handles? Larson Farms. Larson Farms? That's pretty much Are you all together? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not on it. You don't have don't. a big Swede dot... I think I have one, but I don't make videos dot awesome. or post anything. All right. That would fit, dot awesome. Okay, but. fair enough. <laughs> so, a couple other ones. What uh, uh, childhood memory? Let's go farming childhood memory. What's your favorite? Uh, we'll start with uh, Eric. He didn't grow up on a farm. Well, yes, technically no. We had horses. Uh, I worked for a farmer in high school. Uh, Dad... Maybe it's what made, uh, led me to be uh, in love with farming. Uh, I turned 16, I was mowing lawns before that, 
Uh, and Dad looked at me and said, well, if you want to use the car, you're going you're gonna to get a job in addition to mowing lawns. And he said, hand in three resumes a week until you have a job. And I started doing that while talking with a buddy of mine whose uncle was a farmer and got a gig to go over there and throw square bales on the weekend. And after that day, uh, I kind of asked, Joe was his name, the, the farmer, if I could come back and make this more of a full-time job. And that led to me working for him for two years. And we raised cattle and hogs, and he had about 45 cats. <laughs> and I had to feed them the leftovers. But I would say Dad, you know, kind of pushing me in that direction has led me to have a lot of great memories. You know, it's led me to here, you could say, more or less. Uh, definitely fell in love with it because of those couple summers working with Joe. And, well, he was 70 years old when I started working for him, and he was a little rough around the edges, so that was also entertaining. Nice. He'd always just say, well, don't tell your mother. <laughs> don't tell your mother. How about you, Chet? Um, well, I pretty much grew up there, so that was just a great experience all around and learned a ton. That's something we get comments about is how do these guys know so much it's like well I've literally been there my whole life and grew up following dad grandpa my uncle Randy learning from that that's all around a great experience in general um, but I never was I would say held back from anything okay I mean I, I was allowed to basically try anything and grow uh, gain responsibility and kind of made me who I am now, and I'm proud of it, and um, yeah. Doug, five generations, what's your best childhood memory? Well, as a kid, we grew up on the same farmyard as grandma and grandpa. Mom and dad had a house right next to theirs, so. And that same thing that Chet is talking about, I was always right there watching, and, and for the kids that, or the fathers, that want their kids to be involved if you think they have any sort of uh, desire to do it but maybe don't have the drive they want get them out there because when they're young they absorb the knowledge they learn so fast that and it's if it's safe let them do it because they can well as we get ready to wrap things up here, we always ask one question, but I'm going to twist it a little bit because I want to know, usually you ask uh, what's the best advice you've been given, but I want your guys' advice on, you have a lot of fans and people that follow you. What's your best advice for a young kid that wants to get into farming or get into uh, doing content creation like you do? Uh, I would say as far as content creation, you just got to be interesting and put together funny videos, uh, interesting videos. Um, that, that, that's all I did. Yeah. And people ask, what, how, did you, how did you do it? How did you get so many followers? I just posted videos. Yep. And it, that, that side, I have no advice other than <laughs> that's, that's what you do. Yep. Uh, I, I YouTubed how to YouTube. Yeah. Like, I literally did. Yeah. Uh, YouTubed how to talk to a camera. Yeah. Um, it, it's, you teach yourself, do the research, um, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would say find something that isn't a job, you know, make your career in life something that you love. Uh, when we're running the long hours in the spring and fall and people ask, you know, aren't you tired, don't you want to quit, or aren't you sick of that, or sick of doing that same job for three weeks straight, and yeah, we're tired, yeah, the body wants to shut down, you know, 40 hours straight, which Chet and I try to do <laughs> once or twice a year, yeah. gets to be a little long. But I can honestly say I'm very excited to go back the next day. I mean, I love my job. It's hard to get him out of the tractor. Yeah. Last yeah. night, or last spring, three in the morning, tractor blew a turbo pipe off, calls me. I was in bed, I, like, I'm coming to pick you up. Nope. Bring the clamp, uh, impact gun. And I'm like, no, we're going to bed. Yeah. No, brought the clamps out there, fixed it up. And I'm like, all right, it's fixed. You can come back in the morning. It's not going to rain. 3.30 in the morning. No, I'm finishing this field. 
and uh, you just can't tell him to turn it no. off. No. Nope. <laughs> I think a lot of farmers can probably relate to that. That's, that's passion yeah. right there. Yeah. Doug, Doug, you got anything? I don't know. What was the question again? Did got any advice for that? young farmers or uh, people trying to get into the content creation game? Yeah, it's for, for me and for Chet, it was just a family thing. I guess I don't, I don't know. Find somebody that wants, and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of guys that need help. I'm it, sure it's that gonna the door will to, open if you perform. As, you as in our area, I shouldn't talk for every area, but in our area, there's getting to be fewer and fewer 70-year-old, 80-year-old farmers. There's getting to be even fewer 25-year-old farmers. Mm -hmm. And that's also weeding out on who we can find to hire. Yeah. And any job, if you want to get onto a farm, you start looking for farms to work for that um, are willing to hire you and teach you. And you can't learn enough. Like, ask to get, if you're comfortable, ask to get in. And a lot of times, you ain't going to be comfortable yeah. being put in stuff. Like, I've seen hired men almost crying when I put them in an 84-foot land roller. And, <laughs> okay, have fun. Yeah. And the dude looked like he was going to start bawling. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, this ain't good. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the season, he's like, loved it. Right. Was, it was comfortable with it. And you just got to get in there and find somebody that's willing to give you a chance and show them that you're worth it. Eric, let me ask you the question just a little different. Because most of the people that I talk to, they like, I want to get into farming, but my family's not in it or something of that nature. How do you approach a farming family, one of these 65, 70, 80 year olds in the crowd and say, hey, I wanna help you. That's kind of what you did, but you're using someone else's equipment to help farm your acres, right? What, what, what's that conversation look like? What's the advice for the young person that doesn't farm that says, I wanna be in agriculture? Yeah, so it definitely helped that Larson's and I had a friendship prior to me being employed with them. Um, and that's maybe where you'd start, is, don't go up to that, that farmer that you want to work with or work for uh, with the idea that you're going to buy his farm or you're going to take over. Uh, go up to him and just become friends, get to know him. Um, and yet, if it fits, like it has worked very well with Larson's and I, you will, uh, you will build a connection and your future together will have a possibility. I mean, you, you'll end up working together if it's, if it's going to if the personalities are going to blend. If they match. Right. I'd say that's the biggest thing. Your personalities, your, your hired men are like your family on a farm. Anyways, on our farm, they're treated more like family than an employee, and that hurts us sometimes, but uh, that we like to keep that environment best as possible. Got anything else, Corey? Are you guys hiring right now? <laughs> Hard time. Hard time, yeah. yeah. There you go. Sounds like a dream job. So Doug can vacation more? Right. Oh, yeah. Now, now we'll get, uh, no one share my email, we'll get about 300,000 <laughs> yeah. people emailing. You just share what you want to share. You don't have to do <laughs> Well, as we wrap yeah. up, hey, listeners uh, and everybody in the crowd, uh, thankful for Sukup uh, letting us sponsor the podcast here, being here. Uh, so much so that they even made special shirts for the podcast right over there. I want to pitch to go grab one of them shirts and, ha and come right up front. I got a Sharpie, and I'll have Larson Farm sign it for you. I'm, I'm, I'm pigeonholing you guys into doing that. If you guys grab a shirt, but uh, thanks to Larson. Uh, thanks to Sue Cup. What else you got? That's it. I, thanks for coming, guys. It's been an honor. I'm glad to finally meet you. Um, if you guys want to pitch any socials or an email or anything like that, uh, you're welcome to. No, just check out uh, pretty much any social media platform, Larson Farms. Um, you'll learn how to find more of us yeah. somewhere else. Subscribe on everything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yes, thank you.